Hey guys, what's up? Dion here. Today we're taking a look at the new MacBook Air. Now this is the latest MacBook Air that Apple announced. It is now retailing for a thousand dollars. So I've removed the plastic here because it's too shiny. And let's go ahead and take a look at the back first before we open this up, so we can read the specs here. So it has a 13.3 inch screen, of course. Intel Core i3, eight gigs of RAM, 256 SSD, and uh, two Thunderbolt ports. It is $1,000 finally, so they actually lowered the price on the base model. And uh, here we have it, we're gonna check it out and also take a quick look at a 2013 model, a seven year old model. You can see here, I got it in the silver, so we can check this color out, just cause it's my favorite MacBook color out of all of them. Um, so let's go ahead and just take this out of the sleeve here, of course. Um, as far as, you know, overall build quality, just upon first impressions, it's the exact same as the previous gen. And let's just go ahead and put this to one side. Let's see real quick what's also in the box. I don't want to scratch this. Uh, we get a USB, or not a USB type. Yeah, a USB type C cable to USB type C. Little charging brick. It's definitely smaller than something like you get in the MacBook Pro. Um, more manageable too and portable than the other bricks because it requires less power. Let's see if anything's changed here with the Apple stickers by chance or anything. Um, where are they? Here we go. We're going to get silver Apple stickers. Nice. So that's what you're gonna get in the box. What's cool about this is that you can also use the education discount and get this for $900, which makes it an even better price. And um, I think one of the things that I love about the MacBook Air is the design. And I mentioned this when we unboxed last year's version, and that is because um, it is just a such a good looking design. It is basically still the best looking laptop out there in my opinion. That wedge shape is just beautiful to look at. I'm, I have a MacBook Pro uh, 15 inch and I just, it's so heavy and luggy to like grab from a table and carry around, but you can see it right there. This is just so thin and just beautiful to look at. Now, if we compare it to an older generation um, here again from 2013. So yeah, one of the cool things here is of course that over time this MacBook has gotten smaller even though it has the same exact screen that's mainly because you know we have much less bezel now and that old macbook is still works very well for what it is you can see here the keyboard we're going to talk about that real quick the computer is booting up on itself there but uh let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboards because we've removed the butterfly mechanism which apple was you know very happy about a couple years ago, but that did not work out very well. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and skipped through the setup process and all that. Let's go ahead and do my usual tests, which is just going here and uh, just checking, you know, making sure the base model opens everything up without an issue, which it should without any problems or anything. So one of the things that I do want to talk about that is very important here is the fact that we have this new scissor style switch keyboard as opposed to the butterfly keyboard that we had previously. And is it a huge change? Not really. I don't think the average user is really going to notice the difference between the two. However, of course, for people that type a lot and everything and that have had issues with the keyboard, you are going to immediately notice that this is a slightly better tactile feedback, better, you know, original form. You know, it's back to its original feel good um, keys. Now, if we compare it here to an older MacBook, one from 2013, um, you can still see that we do have kind of the nicer, wider, larger keys, which I do prefer as opposed to these right here, which are a little bit small by today's standards. I've gotten used to this kind of wider key, but you can kind of see it there. Very similar layout to the original MacBook Airs. And um, yeah, so you can you know just do a little comparison there. Um, regardless, let us go ahead and check this out because uh, it is about ready to start closing some things out. So let's go ahead and, well, I exited out of Finder, but let's just go ahead. Everything is very responsive here. Let's see. Yeah, no issues here. So this is the base model again, but you still get 256 of, of you know, internal storage, which is really good. I, don't, I wouldn't suggest really upgrading that because you can always just get an SSD and um, work off that if you have photos and videos and stuff. I think 256 is plenty enough for the average work that you do on a computer. If you happen to need more, um, get an SSD and if anything, you know, you can always do iCloud Drive, um, any cloud service and do that that way and save a lot of money on upgrading the internals. If there's anything to upgrade, it's to upgrade to an i7 or anything like that and get some quad core up in here and that will make it plenty fast to do extra video editing, extra photo editing, extra 
CPU intensive stuff that you will be able to do right now, but just not as efficiently. Now, who knows if it'll thermal throttle, if um, it'll heat up too much, cause you really don't want a laptop like this heating up too much, especially if you're using it on your lap. But if you're gonna be docking it or anything, maybe you will want that extra power. All right, now as I mentioned earlier, this one runs for $1,000 or 900 if you're a student or a teacher. And at that price range, you can actually get an iPad Pro with a keyboard. But if you get like last year's iPad Pro refurbished, so this one right here, and you can get around the same price as this. If not, you can go a little bit higher and still get like the Magic Keyboard and the newer iPads. Regardless, which one do you get? I think if you do a lot of media consumption, like you watch a lot of Netflix and stuff like that, and also create a lot of graphics, so anything to do with uh, drawing or um, even video editing, this is very capable of video editing, I would say so even more so possibly than this MacBook Air. It's just really good with graphics work. Then I would say, you know, go with the iPad. If not, if you wanna do a lot of typing or if you just want a larger screen with an easier kind of overall to use thing, then do get the MacBook Air because still, you can't really beat this one and all form factor that is just very easy. You open it, it's ready to use. This, you're gonna end up taking the keyboard or it's just not, you know, it's just not as easy to use. One key point that I do wanna mention though that I think is pretty cool now is that if you were to spill coffee, you wouldn't ruin the iPad because it wouldn't really fall into the iPad. It would just, you know, mess up the keyboard. And, you know, depending on the keyboard you have, that might not be that expensive to replace. However, if you drop some coffee on this MacBook, it's gonna cost you a pretty penny and uh, it's gonna basically ruin everything. So something to keep in mind there, it's actually kind of cool how these work now. And um, you know, if anything happened, you can just swap out the keyboards and that's it. Now, as far as other little things that I wanna mention, the MacBook Air does still have a terrible webcam. Of course, on the iPad Pro, you have really good cameras on both sides. So if you wanna FaceTime or anything like that, it's gonna be much better on the iPad. And uh, let's go ahead and close it here. Let's take a look at the ports. You do get two Thunderbolt ports here, which is uh, fine for you know Apple's cheapest laptop. Would be nice to get more, but uh, two is good. It's good for docking it, and you can get an extra dock if you need it, and you need to plug more things. And you can get uh, just a, a Thunderbolt station that is something that I have that works really well. Again, you have a headphone jack right here. On the back, you just got your four little pads down here at the bottom. And overall, everything looks really great. If I were to recommend the color, I would definitely recommend the silver. It just looks so clean and simple, as you can see right there. And again, very easy to open with one hand. Of course, you know, that traditional MacBook look, it just looks great. Brightness on the screen, as I mentioned, and as you can see here on the camera, is not super bright. So um, if you're gonna be using this in very bright settings, it's not gonna be the brightest screen around and you're gonna maybe find yourself wanting a little bit more brightness at certain points. But if you're using this in normal office in the school locations, the brightness is plenty fine. If you were to go any brighter than this, maybe you're going too bright for that desired location. So it's not brighter than the previous MacBook Air. It's also you know, not as bright as a MacBook Pro 13 or 15 or 16 inch. So again, just to sum everything up because I'm not really a specs person, I don't really care about any of that. I've used Final Cut on 12 inch MacBooks before. That will run perfectly here. Anything like Logic, Sketch, Photoshop, um, you, you'll be even able to get After Effects running on this and doing some work on there. So anything pretty much, and we don't really have to get into it because I can just tell you it's going to run. And I think if you are a power user, you kind of know you're not gonna be able to do very heavy files on something like this. You're not gonna be able to load up Blender or a big After Effects project, you know that. So it's it's not worth pointing that out. But if you're an average user and you just need a laptop that's gonna do pretty much everything you need it to do when you need it to do and uh, it'll just work. You know, if you open Word, you need it to work. If you open Chrome, you just need it to work. This is probably gonna do it for you. And you're gonna be able to do games with something like Stadia or GeForce Now. So. Also, you can do that if you so please. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And aside from that, this was just kind of an overall quick first look at the new MacBook Air. And uh, of course, I'm not gonna cover everything here. It's not a review. Suffice to say though, I don't think there is much to cover. This is a beautiful laptop. If you're interested in a laptop, this is the one to get. It is just a stunning laptop and definitely worth the price. But aside from that, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.